This is Code.org, and we are, well, let's see. You have been asked to paint a border around the food truck so that it has a designated parking spot. Oh, how nice of us. But someone left paint buckets all over the neighborhood, and you need to collect all of the paint as well. <laughs> how sloppy of them. All right, so we got a job. Cool. Decompose the problem to write algorithms for moving forward and painting as long as there are no obstacles, as long as, when we see that, guys, as long as you always need to think, huh, repeat, huh, maybe a while loop, right? Always, as long as. Painting a border around the food truck, any other algorithms you need to solve this problem. Import painterplus.java from backpack, and I do have that, clicky poo on backpacky poo, and check and hit import. If you don't, just hit new file and copy their code from here. All right, and they're asking us to translate our pseudocode from this document. My students, you might have a hard copy, maybe not. Guys, the important of importance of pseudocode, I say this every time I see it, it's done in the real world. It's done by like actual programmers at Google and such. It's a really great way to plan things out and get input. Keep in mind, it's in your own words, and you want to simplify your language. So think of like you're explaining something to a, I don't know, 10-year-old. Really basic, but you want to use programming words as well. All right, so for this one, we should be down here. We need paint fast and paint truck border. All right, I'm just going to copy their descriptions because instead of using this document, I want to show you, I want to test stuff as we go. In this tutorial, I find that more useful. So click a and goodbye. All right, here we are back in our document. And actually, I'll head over to here. And I'm going to put their descriptions in a comment way down here. And I'll have to delete this at the end, but I just want access to it to reference it as we take a look at what we're doing. Okay, that all looks great. Um, if you write algorithms, yep, translate those. Instantiate a painter plus object called my painter. Use your new methods to solve the problem. All right, so we need method signatures, and I know what they are, paint fast and paint truck border. I'm going to go ahead and put both of those down. Now, we're going to follow the format we have been, which is public void. We'll learn more about that, but public's the access modifier. It's so we can use it in the My Neighborhood class, and void means it's not returning something. Regardless, a signature has the method name. We know that. It's paint fast. Parentheses and curly brackets. And just so I don't forget, let's get the other one out of the way. Public void, paint truck border parentheses, curly brackets, bam. All right, so we have that done. Now let's talk about what or how we might do quote unquote pseudocode. Really, I just want to plan this out some. So let me get rid of this guy for now. All right, so for paint fast, we're going to need to move forward, paint, and collect paint as long as there are no obstacles. So as I already mentioned, what could we replace this with as long as? Well, look, I could write the word while here, wall. So and collect paint while there are no obstacles. And it works the same. So I'm going to start with that. I'm going to assume that's the controlling thing, <laughs> the, the loop that we'll need to continue to ask the program to one. So while... And then what will be the condition? I could say wall no obstacles, but we actually are aware of something that we could use already. No obstacles make sense, sure. And that's fine for pseudocode. I could also put though no obstacles or can move forward, right? So as long as there are no obstacles, while there are no obstacles and we can move forward, what do we want to do? Well, I know immediately I want to move. I'm not sure the best order for this if we should paint first and then move, it looks like they have a move then paint. So since we know we'll be able to move at this point, right? I just checked the condition right here. I'll say, what do I want to do next? Painter, move forward. Okay. Now what? Well, obviously, as we move, we need to paint. So let me throw that down here, right? Painter, paint. It's kind of redundant, but and then what? Well, it also asks, hey, if you're on paint, collect paint while there are no obstacles. So we need to collect paint. I notice right away here, though, we have more than one item of paint. So we might have to do something like wall, what, uh, while there is a bucket, 
painter, take paint, right? So this is going to break. This won't work. This is great logic, right? And it's mostly right, but mostly right isn't going to solve our problem. But I want to show you why. Let me not just talk. Let's let's see what's going on here. So I'll go ahead and let's say wall. And we said no obstacles. And we have seen, here's the painter class. Keep in mind, guys, since painter plus extends the painter class, right? That means everything, all the behaviors, all the methods, all of this stuff, that painter can do, we can automatically do in painter plus, right? And since we're in this class, we don't have to use an object, we can call everything directly. So wall, uh, what, what we're gonna do can move, right? We know that's part of this. And we need, I know that we can use this because this has to result in a true false statement. Computers can, computers are secretly dumb and we have to be very exact with them. And this value in between these parentheses with our while loop must be a true or false. So what happens here is the computer, what I'm asking it, I'm asking the computer a question. I say, hey, you, hey, you, my friend computer, who sometimes is my enemy, but my friend computer, is the painter able to move? And the computer goes, I don't know. And, but then it goes smack and it looks and it will respond true. If it is true, we're going to run the code inside of here. If it says, nope, your painter can't move. It would skip anything in these curly brackets and just run whatever we had done here, if anything. So that's what we want. We now know we can move. So let's ask the painter to move. All right, what else next? We said painter dot paint or not dot, but all right. So now I'm going to ask the painter to paint and I'm just going to throw in white as a placeholder. And I hope you're yelling at me because this is already going to break. Let's check out, check it out. Uh, we need to instantiate our object. We're going to be pros of this. Painter plus. All right, so we got that, right? And all this does is we're saying use this class, painter plus class. We gave our variable, our object, a name, my painter plus, and we tell it to run the constructor way up there. Okay, so cool, we have that. Now let's test our, our code. And pada, there's an issue. We have no paint. Right? So we're going to need another check. We can't just tell the painter to paint. We ain't got any. That is not how I should say that. Uh, as a teacher, we have none. Ah, you guys get what I mean, right? So move forward, paint white. We need a condition here. I need to ask the computer another question. Now I don't want to loop, right? A wall statement, a wall loop. Every time this is true, it will just keep running until this is false. That's not what I want. I just want to do this once, but only if I can. So if I'm going to do the parentheses and the curly brackets, because otherwise I forget right away, bam. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and move paint up because I know I want paint in this. And I'm going to ask a question and we again can use everything the painter class can. And so painter has a behavior, a method that is has paint, which is another Boolean. Boolean guys, fancy way to say true, false. All right, so now I'm going to ask the computer if we have paint. And now only if we have paint, will the painter actually paint? Perfect. That would make sense. Now, what about if we are on a bucket? Well, we need to collect paint. And I said we would use a wall statement there. So wall, uh, there's a on bucket method is on bucket. Yep. And again, a true false there is on bucket. And then I'm going to say we have take paint which will pick up the paint, right? And so now this is a loop inside of a loop, which is technically fine. It is fine, actually. But I already have an issue, kind of. We should use the resources that we have. We've written this somewhere else. Let me scroll up here. We wrote something, wrote something, written something, created something to take all the paint, take all paint. And so instead of me writing this wall loop again down there, why don't we just run the method that we have? That is cleaner code. So now I can just do it like this. And notice that this condition's already here. So I don't have to check anything because it's not going to air out. It's going to check if we're on a bucket before it runs. All right. There's still going to be an order issue, I believe. But let's go ahead and see. My problem or my suspicion here is if we look at how we're painting, Sometimes we might be on top of a bucket 
And if we are on top of a bucket and we try to paint it before we take the paint, it will not be happy. It's going to say, why are you trying to paint the bucket? But let's go ahead and start out. We start out there. Um, I'm going to do turn right, dot move, and then paint fast. Let's give this a shot. Well, that's a problem. What happened there? We just jumped over the bucket. Let me take a look. So keep in mind, code must run in order. So if we go back to right here, we turned and we stood on the bucket. Ooh, that's an issue though, because what's the first thing I did here? While I can move, I was already standing on the bucket. So let me eliminate this line of code. Painter tried tried to paint off the grid or over an obstacle because the paint bucket's there. Say we were here one block back, paint fast, right? And we check, can we move? So if we're right here, the computer says, all right, I've asked the computer, can I move? The computer says, yep, you could take a step. So this is true. And so it has to run this code. We then step forward one, plop. It then says, do we have paint? We would, right? We painted white here. So that's true. So we put down some paint and then it has take all paint. Take all paint says it runs the stuff up here, right? It will execute this code. And all this does is if we're on a bucket or as long as we're on a bucket, while we're on a bucket, we take it. Not on a bucket, doesn't matter. Once we execute that method, we drop below, bottom of our wall loop, we would now be standing here. And so the computer must check the condition again before trying to continue code beneath. And it does, it says, can you move? Zoop, we're standing here. Yep, we can move, this is true. Has to run the code inside. We move forward one. We're on the paint bucket, if has paint. We do have paint right now. However, we try to paint and we try to paint over this bucket. So instead of painting first, why don't we try to check if there is paint there? Or by that, a bucket here, right? So now we can avoid this situation because we'll pick up the paint from the bucket. Cool. All right, I'm liking that. That's looking good. Now let's talk about paint truck border. What's this going to need to have done? Honestly, guys, from what I can tell, it looks like we just need to turn. Now, how could we figure out when to turn with this? Well, if I look at this, I hit a wall. What should I do? Turn left. Right here, I hit a wall. What should I do? Turn left. Right here, I hit an obstacle. What should I do? Turn left. Interesting. So, my pseudocode for this would just be something like, but I'm not even sure yet. Probably something like this, right? So if I can't move forward, turn left. And that would be for this guy. All right, so let's take a crack at this. I'm going to say wall, right? So as long as, um, let's do has paint, right? Because that's the goal of this. We want to paint a truck border. So as long as the painter has paint, what do I want to do? Actually, I'm not going to do a loop first. I'm going to do it the hard way. I'm going to write everything out to, because I want to. It seems like it will be easier to understand. And I do this a lot. Sometimes I don't do a loop until I write literally every line. And then I look for what's in common or what's repeated. So let's do that. I want to do paint fast. Bam, bam, bam. All right. So once I paint fast, I would run this right up here, right? So once I paint fast, I'll be here. We can see that. Now what I want the painter to do is going to be turn left. Okay. And then what? Well, hopefully just paint fast again, right? We can tell I would paint a line with paint fast. Bam. Okay. Now what? Well, turn left. Right? And then what? Paint fast. Right? And how many sides does the square have? One, one side, two sides, three sides. Turn left. I don't think I'll have to turn left at the end. But I will right here. Let's see if this works. Alright? I'm just going to try this. Paint truck border. So now I'm just going to start by turning right and I don't need to run paint fast because it runs inside of our paint truck border method. So now I can just say, hopefully, bam. So guys, is this technically correct? Yes, 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 yes. Right? Definitely. It meets the criteria. Um, however, what I would say is with code, if you're repeating yourself like this, there's a more efficient way. So why not let's do it the more efficient way. I don't want to use this. I want to use a wall loop. Because would it matter that much if the very last step right here was to turn left? I 
I don't think it would, right? We could turn one more time. Now, the trick for this is going to be figuring out what to put in this condition. So, wall, we wouldn't want to do can move if we're going to turn left each time. So, let's see if has paint does it. While I have paint, bam. Hopefully, I'm out of paint right here. And so, I'm just going to take these two lines, right? Instead of repeating it four times, I'm going to ask the computer to do that for us. I'm going to get rid of this. Let's check that out. Oh, that's a problem because I don't have paint at the beginning. All right, so turn right. I guess I'll have to move again. Uh oh, and I'll have to take paint. I'm making us. And there's going to be more than one way to solve this. Ooh, see how I skipped that? That I hate. So instead, let's do, we could do this. We could paint past right here. Bam. So that will work, right? Boom. And I just want to hit upon, guys, there's more than one approach, right? There def absolutely is. You could have has paint up here as the variable. You could figure out a way to not have to do this paint fast manually at first. Uh, maybe do something about checking if the painter is on the paint. But that's the fun thing is code. There's not one exact solution. You get to build your own. All right, so let's hit this. Cool. On. Cool. Onward. 